My name is Dixon. I'm an ass by profession and I'm born again. I'm here to give a testimony of an encounter with the Lord, how the Lord took me to hell. Well, this testimony was once written in the Kenyan Palace magazine, but I've been told the Lord for a while this year. The word of the Lord came unto me that he has anointed me to plead the gospel to the poor, to the brokenhearted, and plead deliverance to the captain, and seek the kingdom and his righteousness, and other things shall be had, not for my own benefit, but for the expansion of the kingdom, for the continuity of the kingdom, and for the enlargement of the kingdom. Most so I want to talk about sin, because sin was the one that has led me, was has led me to the world of the dead. As the Bible says that the wages of sin is dead, uh, this word is coming to pass each and every other day. James 1.15 that says that when sin is fully overgrown, it leads to death. And so sin is just like a seed. And just there are several different kinds of seed that mature and produce in different seasons. Likewise, sin are of different kinds that mature and produce differently. Because the Bible says that there, there's a sin that leads to death and there's a sin that does not lead to death. And this also says that they, they are forgivable and forgivable sin. They demonstrate that sin are of different types. And more, I want to talk about uh, sexual sin because there's a sin that mature and produce faster than any other sin and the world is not aware. When, if you read uh, 1 Corinthians 6.18, it says that free from immorality, Every other sin a man commits does not sin against the body. So the only sin that you sin against the body is the sin of fornication. And that would do sin against the body. The Bible says that when you join yourself to another person, you become one. So all the evil spirits of that person, all the demons of that person are transferred unto a body. And how does this uh, sin of uh, mature faster than the other sin. When you read the first Corinthians uh, 3 16, it is says that don't you know that your body is the temple of God? Read, uh, then read verse 17. God himself says, I will destroy whoever destroys uh, God's temple. So I'm here about to demonstrate how sin has devastated the world. Well, hear my story. Uh, I grew up in a family, in a Christian family. My parents were Christian and uh, they always made us that we uh, attend uh, the Sunday service. And whenever we did not attend Sunday service, my offspring would receive total punishment from my father. I can remember one uh, Sunday uh, service while I was in Sunday school, the Spirit of the Lord came unto me and I found myself shedding tears. And I didn't know what, uh, what was happening, but I promised God that I was serving the rest of it. So I grew, I went to my primary education, second education, that because after second education, God gave me a college to study then in the city of Nairobi. Thereafter, I went back to the village and found that I had no, no job. So I started engaging with things that are not worthy. I started doing shameful things, teaching myself how to live behaving myself in wicked ways, uh, involving myself with sexual sin, and uh, continued and progressed for a while. Then, at that club, because after staying in the village for a while, God gave me a job far away from the area. So I went in that area and I continued the same uh, behavior of drinking and eating me and involving myself sexual sin. And this also continued for a while. Then I remember one Saturday, Evening, I involved myself sexual sin. On Sunday morning, I woke up with a headache that was so persistent. It continued till evening, and that morning, I decided to go to, back to my old media to see for medical attention, and because the head was so severe. So I traveled the whole day because it was a far distance, and, and I arrived at my old media at around 4 a.m. So when I went to the bus, port, the bus stop, I was staggering and uh, the headache was so, so bad. So I decided to seek medical attention in a clinic around the marketplace where I was writing them. On entering the clinic and the clinician taking history, he gave some pasta. So I started at home and 
When I arrived home, I found my parents and talked to them and told them the why I was uh, uh, traveling home. So I sat on the bed in front of the house. And uh, while well, I was just sitting there, uh, a friend of mine who we used to do to involve ourselves with some things, but now is as pa as passed on, came to greet me. And let me tell you, friends, when this friend of mine started to speak, I never heard the voice of a, of a human being. I heard the voice of a pig. When this friend of mine started talking, I heard the voice of a pig. So I started realizing that they were not, uh, were not normal. So I did not even mention. And after my friend left, even came and we had supper and went to sleep. At 3 a.m., that is when I was so, uh, awakened by sounds of music that came from a distance. You know, I was a lover of secular music and other video shop. So I was woken by sounds of music. When I look, looked in the darkness, because those days there were no electricity in the home area, what I saw frightened me. I saw two lots of people, what seemed like human beings, in the darkness wearing clothes of those those of the undertaker of the restaurant and so they were late to take me so i shot out of the bed uh, opened the door and called my mother and i told her the things that i'm seeing i have never seen them so i told her to help to play and we sat on the bed in front of the house friends before even we started to play what i saw in, uh, saw in the air before my eyes scares me even today. A lightning struck uh, before my eyes and I saw the word heaven and I saw the doors open. Friends, I was not night dream. Just before my eyes, a lightning struck in that hour of the night at around 3 a.m. before my eyes and the lightning, I saw the word heaven and I saw the doors close. So I asked mother, have you seen anything? Mother, I don't see anything. So I did not explain what I saw. So we sat and we, uh, mother helped to pray, we prayed for a while. Then after some times, after prayer, mother told me to go back to sleep so that uh, I, we can wait for the morning hours that we could go to the hospital. When we came back to my bed, uh, this evil spirit started start, uh, start coming again. And you know, those days there was total darkness, there was no even electricity, no home medium. So I knelt down, held the head of the bed, and started to pray. All of a sudden, I had something come out of the body, and I fell down. And I remained there for a while until around 5 a.m. when mother came to check on me. Uh, when she opened the door, I had a uh, I walk out screaming and crying, say that I was dead. Uh, and so she called my brother, she called my father, and and when they came and lifted me up, I asked something to come back in my body. I came to realize that my spirit uh, had come out of the body and was taken somewhere, but when they lifted me, it came back. But my soul was still in. That's why I could hear uh, my mother screaming. So I was last to the hospital. In the hospital, I was received as an emergency. And I was put, I feel, I feel lunch and I was diagnosed of cerebral malaria. These people are diagnosing me of cerebral malaria, but they did not know what was happening. As for me, there are things that were happening in my life that were normal. So I was demented in a private world. And let me tell you, friends, as from 8 a.m. throughout the day and night, I went into coma. And in my coma, I could be shown all those things that I used to do while I was still young. That's what the Bible says that to be judged according to what you did and to what to you spoke. And at around 11 a.m., I could even nurses speaking to one another. Ah, is he gone? And I could hear very well. And that's why it's advisable not to speak to anyone who is in, a, in coma. Because he has, most of the time the soul, uh, the, the, the soul is, the, that is the mind, is still on. But the spirit and the other ones, it's out of, the, of that person's body. That's, why, that's how the person here, because the mind is still working. And at around 12 a.m., friends, that's when my spirit left and I was taken 
to hell. I just found myself in hell. I just found myself in another world. And before even I spoke what I saw in hell, I want to remind you of a scripture in Luke uh, 16, 19, 29. That is the scripture of the rich man and the, and the Lazarus. When the rich man died, he lifted his eyes and found himself in hell. That demonstrates that in heaven, hell can see. When the poor man died, he lifted his hand and found himself in the paradise. And the Bible says that this rich man uh, told Abraham, they demonstrate that in heaven and hell you can speak. That is all your senses alone while you, 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 when you lift your eyes and find yourself in heaven. Well, this uh, rich man and poor man lifted their eyes and found themselves in hell. So, when I lifted my eyes in hell, these are the things that I saw and I remember vividly what I saw. And what I saw as you get entered the gates of hell, there were scorpions, there were snakes and hands, and I could see people pass through them, and I could hear the screaming and, and the weeping. Then I was taken to another section where I was shown uh, people naked, sliding on lead hot metals, and they could hear the kind of pain that were in. The crying and the pain and the grunting of the tears, as the Bible says. Then I was taken to another section where I was on the bottomless pit. These are the things that I saw that, that, that night. The bottomless inside it, they are sharp objects. As you go down this sharp object, they pierce and cut in pieces. And then I was taken in another section where I was shown the lake of fire. Then uh, the word of the Lord came unto me and said, This is where uh, the sinners will be, will be cast after, after judgment. Uh, after being shown this, I had something snatch me, and I saw the figure of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then thereafter, my spirit came on, uh, back unto my body, and in the hospital, I could do forces, two forces fight for me. That was because the force of the devil was, was, was defeated. Then I started gaining strength and recuperating. I can remember to our nurses that were reporting to work that early morning because they had been told that I, I passed on. When they opened my play, the, the private ward where I was, when they saw me staring at them, they ran away. Maybe they saw a, a, a ghost, I, I, I don't know. But I can remember when the, they opened the door, they ran away. Friends, I want to warn you about sin because sin is the one that devastating the world. Well, I want to say that heaven and hell does not come in the day of judgment. When one dies as a sin, he lifts his sight and finds himself in paradise. When one dies as a sinner, he lifts his sight and finds his friend in hell. And you go in torment, I wait in, I wait in judgment. And anyway, I want to talk about death after short illness. Most deaths that are happening today, uh, people are not aware. They are happening because of sin. That is when sin is overgrown. As because what happens when sin is overgrown, God removes his protection and the devil, devil attacks you with either sickness or accident. And that uh, happens abruptly. As for me, I sinned on Saturday. On Tuesday, I, I was dead. And that's why I want to want the world to free from every sin. People are modifying sin to look like uh, to look like sin. And I want to let you know, friends, that whatever you are doing that is not worthy before God, you one day you, you have to you you, are, you you have to harvest. And so to continue, I want to to bring people to repentance. If you read Romans three. Uh, 23. It is said that uh, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yes, true that we, we are all, all have sinned. But if you read Romans 5 8, it is said that while, while we were still sinners, God demonstrated His love and to us by giving us His only Son that may die for us, that we may be saved. And 
That is how the love of Christ was in us, that demonstrated his love by giving us his only son that may die for us, that may be saved. That does not mean that we are just saved automatically. There is something uh, you have to do. If you read uh, uh, Romans 10, 19, it says that if you confess that our Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord, and believe that our Lord Jesus raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. So you have the work to confess and to believe so that you may be saved. So to those who want to be saved, can you follow this words that you may come to the light before the Father? So I've given this testimony that you may make the right decision to come with the, uh, with the right choice in their life and I hope heaven for them. So may God bless you as you keep on meditating on this testimony. Amen.